Every year, another audio gear company releases a new THX amplifier and claims to have the lowest distortion and noise. Every year, some people argue the numbers and vigorously defend their positions. The Mass Drop 789 was the definition of hype. Limited stock, rave reviews by professional reviewers, and astronomical prices for secondhand units on eBay all contributed to the mystique of the 789. Now, well, Mastrov has so many units that they have put the product on Amazon. Monolith released its own competitor to the 789, the Monolith DHX Desktop. It has more features, but on paper is technically less powerful. And last year, Monolith released another THX amplifier. It's the 887. Is it a worthy upgrade to your current setup or merely catering to the hype crowd? Monolith sent me the 887 to review. I have 30 days and then the unit goes back. Last year, when I spoke to Hobie Seacrest, he briefly discussed the 887. If you recall, Hobie is the production manager at Monolith and is responsible for all Monolith products. Hobie told me that the 887 was created to address the complaints people had with the THD numbers with the THX desktop amplifier. He mentioned that some on Audio Science Review had blasted Monolith for not achieving the same low distortion and noise numbers as Mastrop did with the 789. So Hobie greenlit the 887. Mind you, he did not do it because he actually believes you will hear the difference. Quite the contrary. He told me that you cannot hear the difference, but he simply got tired of a certain group whining. Trust me, I can empathize. When I first saw the 887 last year, I was intrigued. I thought Monolith was trying to position itself directly against Mastrop, $400 THX amp to $400 THX amp. But the specs of the 887 tell a slightly different tale, one which should cause people to reconsider the 789 hype mobile. The Monolith 887 is physically very similar to the Mastrop 789. In fact, when I first unboxed it, I had a feeling of deja vu. Putting the two products side by side, you can tell that Monolith was uh, um, inspired by the 789 design. Very inspired. The build feels rather solid. The 887 has a metal case. It has metal knobs. The volume knob on the 887 is very slightly larger than on the 789 and the same size as the one on the Monolith desktop. The volume knobs on all three amplifiers turn smoothly, though I think that the 789 has a slightly smoother volume knob. The gain selection knob on the 887 is circular, whereas the 789 has one with a curved and carved grip. They both work just fine, but I think that the 789 knob is both easier to grasp and easier to see where the gain is. The carved knob acts as a pointer to the gain number. The 887 has one balanced XLR, one quarter inch single ended output, and one 3.5 mm single ended output. On the back, it has balanced XLR inputs, RCA inputs, and a set of RCA pass through, exactly the same as the 789. The 887 is also the most powerful amplifier of the three THX models, at least on paper. On balance, the 789 provides 6 watts at 16 ohms and 800 milliwatts at 300 ohms. The Monolith THX desktop provides a little over 1.9 watts at 16 ohms and 580 milliwatts at 300 ohms on balanced. In contrast, the new 887 provides 8.8 .8 watts at 16 ohms and 700 milliwatts at 300 ohms with balanced output. Clearly, the 887 has a precipitously low power output as the resistance increases. Indeed, if you compare the specs of the 789 to the 887, you'll notice something rather amusing. Mastop claims that the 789 provides 6 watts at 16 ohms and at 32 ohms. However, according to Monolith, the 887 provides 8.8 .8 watts at 16 ohms and then cuts the power by 2.8 watts when the resistance is doubled to 32 ohms. At 32 ohms, the 887 provides 6 watts, the same as the 789. The news does not get much better from there. Once again, assuming that Mastrop and Monolith have provided accurate numbers, the 789 appears to provide slightly more power overall than the 887. This kind of begs the question, who really needs 8.8 .8 watts of power at 16 ohms? But you're not interested in the 887 for the amplification numbers, you're interested because of the impossibly low distortion measurements. 
Well, in that regard, uh, prepare to not have your jaw drop. The 887 apparently has a THD measurement of between 0.000007% and 0.00032%. The THD oscillates depending on the resistance and amplification. Regardless, this is somewhat the lowest THD measurement I have ever seen. Monolith says that the 887 provides, quote, infinitesimally low levels of noise and distortion. Well, yeah, that appears to be the case on paper. Indeed, Audio Science Review was quite impressed with their own measurements of this unit. But let me throw some cold water on this hot brew of hype. The numbers Monolith provides are essentially the same numbers that Mastra provides for the 789. There is very little variance between the two. I want to emphasize this. The difference between the measurements is at most 100 thousandths of the decimal point, and at best, the 887 is one millionth of a decimal point better. Try writing those decimal places on a piece of paper. In fact, if you look at the Audio Science Review measurements, you might at first be taken away by the glowing review, but the measurements show that the 887 at best has a 2 decibel advantage over the 789, and that 2 decibel advantage can easily be attributed to improper testing methodology or measurement error inherently built into the measurement itself. I connected the 789 and 887 to the SMSL SU8 and plugged in my Mr. Speaker's Ether Flow 1.1 via Balanced XLR. I sat there and listened with no audio. I couldn't hear a difference in noise floor. When I randomly selected several tracks and switched back and forth, I still could not hear any noise difference. But what about the sound? Look, if you're considering any of these THX amplifiers, your question should not be what is the sound signature, because the THX amps should not have a sound signature, they should be transparent. That certainly seems to be the case with the 887. Paired with the SMSL SU8, you hear, well, neutral, which is then altered by whatever headphones that you use. Pair instead a warmer DAC like the iFi Zen DAC and you'll hear a slightly warmer sound signature than the SU8. The real question is, should you upgrade your current system? Well, that depends on a lot of factors. First, what is your current system and why do you want to upgrade it? Second, do you have the equipment to take advantage of the THX technology? And third, and most importantly, do you think you will actually hear a difference between THX and any other modern amplifier? To the first question, if you currently own the 789 or Monolith THX desktop, is the 887 a required purchase? If you do not own a THX amplifier, is the 887 the one you should buy rather than the 789 or the Monolith desktop? Well, those are questions we're going to have to answer, but my initial impression is that not really. An upgrade is not required with the 887, and as far as buying the 887 as your first THX amplifier, well, we'll have to do the test to be more sure. To the second question, whether you have the necessary equipment to take advantage of THX amps. Well, do you already have a balanced neutral DAC to pair with the 887? If not, do you have the money to buy one? And the third question, can you actually hear the differences between the THD numbers amongst these amplifiers? I have been playing around with the 887 since I got it, so I have a personal opinion regarding the first two questions, but in all fairness, it is important that I go through the test with you so that you can make a decision yourself. However, the third question, whether you can hear the differences amongst THD numbers, that is an issue I am always prepared to answer. And the answer is no, of course you cannot. It is a human impossibility, a physical impossibility, a physiological impossibility that you can hear the differences between 0.004% THD and 0.002% THD. You are incapable of hearing the distortion and noise differences between the 789 and the 887 and the monolith desktop. There is no scientific basis for anyone to claim that they can hear the differences between the hundred thousand and one millionth decimal point differences between all these amplifiers. Anyone who says that they can actually hear the difference is defying the laws of man and nature. Look, I'm glad I got that out of the way. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy the 887, but I'm really struggling to justify its existence. 
maybe if you are a professional and need hyper accurate amplifiers, then something like the 887 makes sense. But I assume you also have benchmark class DACs and suitable headphones. But for the rest of us, the normal people, products like the 887 simply cater to the noisy crowd hyper focused on distortion numbers. They argue about THD more than they actually listen to music. So let me reiterate. I will never recommend the 887 for its low THD measurements, that is a total gimmick. But would I recommend it for other reasons? I guess you'll have to wait for the full reviews and comparison videos to find out.